Hey, what's up, YouTube? We are at the sixth edition of the Canon Photo Marathon here in Delhi, India. Now, Photo Marathon spans across 10 Asian countries, and this is a quite creative competition for Canon, where, number one, you do not have to be a Canon user. You can have any cameras, dedicated cameras, though not your smartphone, and you can take part in this competition, paying a very nominal participation amount. I think it's about 500 Indian rupees in case of India, at least. Number two, is that uh, that's something unique I found about this competition is where Canon lets its participants go out to the field and take photographs based on a particular theme which keeps on changing year after year and then there are three winners who get to win exclusive prizes. So let's go and check out what's inside, what's in the photo marathon, what happens, the crowd and everything and we are also here to interview Mr. Andrew Koh who is the Vice President of Consumer Imaging and Information Center, Canon India. So let's get started. Welcome, Andrew. Tell us something about the Canon Photo Marathon. Canon Photo Marathon is a very unique uh, live photo contest that was uh, started in Singapore more than 10 years ago. And <coughs> it has grown to be a big event across Asia. <coughs> now, currently, uh, more than 10 countries. And in uh, India, this is our sixth edition of the Canon Photo Marathon. This is a very uh, exclusive to Canon event, yeah. Um, <clears throat> where photographers come together and they do a live uh, shooting uh, based on the theme that is given to them on the spot. So you have to think on your feet. You know, you have to exercise your creativity, and you know, uh, depending on how you interpret the themes, and uh, then. The judging is done on the same day and the results are announced on the same day too. So it's, it's a very unique concept, different from all other photo contests that you see. So I'm made to believe that it's across 10 countries in Asia? Um, as far as I can remember, of course it started in Singapore. So Singapore is still holding it. Uh, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, Vietnam, Thailand, Philippines, Hong Kong, uh, India. Taiwan, India. So what is this Asia Traveller Protection Program or ATPP in short and how Canon believes it's going to benefit its customers? Yes, <clears throat> we recently just launched this program, uh, ATPP or uh, Asia Traveller Protection Program that is uh, for our customers who purchase our Canon cameras or who owns our Canon cameras and when they travel to any of the 12 countries under this program in Asia uh, and if and so their camera requires service or repair in these countries, they can uh, avail of the services there and you'll be reimbursed when they return to India. So this is a special privilege program that we extend to all our Canon customers. Well, so now we'll shift our focus to the Canon cameras per se. Which product line in particular do you think is the most popular in terms of sale in India? For example, you have the entry-level DSLRs like the four digits one, 1200D. You have the entry-level premium ones, the 700 or the 750D. You have the 70D, the mid-range ones, the mid-range premium ones like the 7Ds and the full frame. Which one of these uh, you think are most popular with Indian customers? The, because Canon has a wide range of cameras, we cater uh, to a wide range of uh, customer usage from the entry-level right up to the professional series. So at each uh, segment in each category, I think uh, we have different cameras that appeal to different groups. So for example, at the entry level, uh, the 1200D is very popular. Uh, and that's a good sign for us. It means that more and more uh, first-timers and uh, uh, enthusiasts are getting into photography. Right? Uh, and then next up is the 700D, 
which has also proven to be very popular because those who want a bit more from the camera, they have you know upgraded or they, they go for the 700D. Uh, for the mid-end segment, the uh, EOS 70D is very popular. And then moving upwards, we have the, of course, the 5D Mark III is a perennial favourite. And we are very encouraged by this because we see that uh, these models set a benchmark you know, in a different uh, category. For example, we were told that for wedding photographers, they, they, are, they are of the same opinion that the 5D Mark III is the standard for wedding photography and videography. So they are able to charge more if they own, if they are using uh, EOS 5D Mark III for, for their, their work in uh, weddings. So I think it, uh, we are glad that we can cater to the different segments uh, across the whole spectrum for all our customers. So DSLRs are obviously very high-end specialized cameras, so they are always be you know used for those. But what about the point-and shooters? There is a huge uh, hue and cry or assumption in general is that because the smartphone have become so powerful in terms of the image and video qualities, we see a decline, a huge decline in the point and shooters. So what's Canon's point of view on this? Well, <clears throat> technology is evolving all the time. And I think the same goes for cameras, the same goes for mobile phones. And so in the last, uh, in the recent few years, we have seen a shift uh, in the consumer buying behaviour towards compact cameras. Uh, they are moving to, uh, away from the uh, basic point-and-shoot compact camera towards more full-featured compact cameras. That, uh, that uh, mobile phone that is equipped with the camera is not able to match. For example, compact cameras with high optical zoom because uh, a mobile phone camera can never do that. Uh, or, or a full-featured uh, series like our PowerShot G series where <clears throat> you know it has very good low-light capability, high ISO which you know uh, again a mobile phone camera can never uh, do it. But on the whole I think it shows that people are clicking more photos and utilizing whether you're using a mobile phone or a compact camera or DSR but on the whole it's expanding the, the whole base. Yeah, although now the buying behaviour has shifted, you know, it's gone towards more high zoom and full featured compact cameras. Another huge major technology shift we are seeing is uh, a shift from the DSLRs per se to the mirrorless cameras for various uh, reasons, for example, the weight and the sizes of the mirrorless cameras. And many believe that the mirrorless camera nowadays actually shoot better videos. They have more focus points and many other things than the DSLR. And we've seen that the traditionally big camera players like Canon, for example, are quite slow in bringing out the mirrorless cameras. We've seen the EOS M, it's an ancient um, camera, and then the EOS M3 uh, upgrade arrived a lot late. So what's Canon's thinking about the mirrorless space in general? <coughs> well, Canon is the number one camera maker in the world. So obviously, uh, we will also be uh, looking at all the uh, technology shifts and trends, you know, uh, uh, and mirrorless is another segment uh, uh, for us. We also have cameras in that category, uh, not as probably <coughs> not as many as a few other players, <coughs> but then again, we also cater to that segment because some people may prefer mirrorless, some prefer still prefer DSR. So there are pros and cons. Uh, we wouldn't say uh, which one is superior to the other. I think uh, both has its uh, uh, pros and cons. So we will continue to provide for that. Um, as to uh, whether we are s uh, fast or slow in coming out with new models, I think it's all relative. All right? in, in the end, what we want to provide is a, a, uh, to provide good models yeah, uh, with value-added features. <coughs> Um, and I think we will continue to do that to come up with compelling models for, for customers to choose from. Well, now that we've seen that cameras like the 70D and the 7D Mark II becoming so good in video autofocusing uh, in general due to its 12 pixel autofocus system, do you see a possible extinction of the consumer camcorders totally? That's an interesting question. 
because Canon was a uh, or is uh, in a, to a large extent responsible for this <laughs> shift because when when we launched the EOS 5D Mark II many years ago, it it started this revolution of uh, uh, video in uh, DSLR cameras, and now you know every DSLR camera comes with uh, video features, uh, so. To a large extent, it has affected uh, consumer camcorders. I think inevitable, you know, that, that's what happens. Um, so, I don't know, we'll, we'll see the demand for consumer camcorders continue to decline. Uh, I, I cannot comment whether you'll become extinct, but you know, there are some people who still prefer a dedicated uh, camcorder, but obviously, you know, now it, with the Video quality at such a high level in DSLRs, you know, it's, it sort of eliminates the need for a, a dedicated uh, consumer camcorder. Thank you, Andrew. It was great talking to you. So there was, guys, Andrew Ko, Vice President, Consumer Amazing and Information Center, Canon India.